So I'm going to shoot a new video. So I have uh, tucked away all the equipment I had over here. So I'll just put it up again. Order all these components from Mouser. And uh, I was expecting taxes and some uh, customs fee. But I didn't expect them to take extra. Because it was more than 12 items. So it's like 66 items or something like that. And uh, it ended up costing as much as uh, the components itself. So Mouser has free um, shipping when you order over 500 crowners or something. So that's a bit depressing. So I, was, uh, I need to figure out what I need to do to make it a bit cheaper to order components because I can't work like this, you know. I can't stop and pay so much money just for getting stuff. It's, it's not worth it. So I have lots of stuff now. Um, lots of sockets. A new pair of tweezers. We have a lot of stuff. So we will have a look at that as we go along in this video. <laughs> Well, enough about the pressing things, because this video has been sponsored by PCBWay. As you can see, it's a replica of the Commodore 64 KU motherboard. So, I need to figure out this focus thing. <laughs> so that's cool. I will use this one as a uh, template. I have put everything in bags, and I also label them into sections like this is uh, the rest and this one is the middle one I have pictures of everything so this is this part and I have something for this part and such so I was thinking okay when I populate this one I can populate this one also in the same way and I can check the bill of materials that I have the schematic correct because I'm, that was the main main thing about this project was making a schematic so so this is just, um, it's not just, but it's uh, its the byproduct. I don't know why I say these things. It's uh, the bonus of making the schematic. I don't know. Why do one thing and not the other? Anyway, I sent one of these to a friend. I've already found a mistake. So you can see here that the uh, slot here this uh, user board is missing on the, uh, the uh, replica so that's okay I can file it down and I'll fix the original I have already fixed it actually yes yeah, so I will bring out the equipment and uh, I will also try and hold the camera still I have a uh, tripod, <sighs> tripod thingy it's a gimbal thing it's really nice I don't have a camera stand. I should have a camera stand for phone. I'm filming with a phone. I have actually charged uh, this phone and this uh, iPad mini and the camera and another uh, iPhone, actually iPhone 6. So I will just grab whatever camera I need if it stops working or it's full or something. And I will just put the video together at the end. Try to figure out what we do belongs where and when. and. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's been a long time since I made a video. I'll probably cut this to death so, because I'm just talking randomly. Yeah, so let's get on with it. So I'm just bringing out the uh, stuff I have tucked over here. And here are all my cables and this is the soldering iron. Over here, just plug it in and we're set to go. Yeah, add the camera on us. And now, so it's a Saturday, by the way, and uh, I feel really energetic. I wasn't I was a bit depressed in the start of the video, but then I was thinking, oh, let's just get on with it. And uh, when I started doing it, it was actually not so bad. So, yeah, sometimes you just need to get going. And then, this is another board, it's a 25407. I must say, I haven't got all the components I need. For example, the switch and um, 
Actually, I got most of it. So, but there's some component. Yeah, like, uh, all these uh, DIN connectors. Yeah, I actually got one of those user ports. So if I can find them. Yeah, all in due time, anyway. So, I was ordering this board after spending like weeks and weeks of uh, making a schematic and then comparing it to the sprint layout. So if you're new here, I did a sprint layout. It's a um, proprietary software, by the way, uh, to use scanned images. That's why I've removed all the components here and draw on top of it. So it's really easy. If you need a component, just draw all the pads and then the silk screen and then you take your mouse and um, mark it and just say uh, make component and then you have the component. You can copy it around and if you do that in KiCad you will suffer. So <laughs> so anyway, but it's a different beast, the, that program. So what I did, I drew drew everything I used the design rules check to just see if something was too close and stuff like that and then I used the Gerber to PCB news tool in uh, KiCad uh, basically what that means is it takes the Gerber files that came from sprint layout and it converted it into something similar like a, a KiCad layout but then you have problems every hole was the same like the software didn't understand how to make holes the same way. So what I did then was to make components in KiCad and then swapping out all the holes. And the vias are a bit larger than usual. Usually they are really tiny, like 0.3. So what I did was that I went into the, um, the design file actually with a text editor for the PCB new. So this is the design anyway. And I, I searched and replaced all the holes with 1.1 uh, mm holes and a, a bit larger uh, padding. So, then it got very close to the original, as you can see. And uh, <laughs> I just uh, did it for everything. So, but that was good because almost everything is the same, except for some holes that are bigger than, yeah, like the mounting holes and stuff. So yeah, I'm uh, really happy with the result. So why did I do it in KiCad anyway? What? Why go through all the trouble? Well, when you do a design like this, you will ex expect errors. I've seen many do uh, this sprint layer thing now, and I don't know how they get away with errors. It's it's insane how much that can go wrong. And also one reason why it goes wrong is because this, well, it looks really high contrast here, right? But that's because you have the angle of the, angle of the light. But if you look like this, the contrast is really poor. And under the scanner, it was horrible. So therefore, sometimes when you have a little trace that goes between like this bus down here this is a power bus and into pin you could make a mistake so and that's why I use KiCad to make the schematic and I thought okay when I if I'm going to make a schematic and that's the main purpose why not use the schematic to check the layout and therefore I got the sign rules check also and then I found another two mistakes so <laughs> so I think it's pretty good now of course you can't check things like uh, slots or things in the edge cuts so it's fun talking to the camera again let me tell you that so yeah so let's uh, we will need these two guys and um, I have three left please just opening some of these packages, 74LS257 and I think it's a bit much to pack everything like this but okay, they should know that they have packed very good <laughs> yeah, so 
this is reducing a bit here because it's a bit messy. So I think I will start with the um, resistors actually. Joystick ports. These are more sockets. Yeah. Yeah, this one is really cool. I'll show you one. <laughs> this is the common mode show. It's used on the 9 volt power that comes into the system. You can see this one over here. And this is the same thing, just has a plastic around it. So, let's show you what it looks like. It looks really great, actually. So it's nice and black. <laughs> I thought that was really cool. Just yeah, and it fits. Yes, I've sorted a bit so it must be easy to find stuff. This is all the semiconductor stuff, diodes and IC. More mechanical stuff than uh, capacitors. Yeah, here's more capacitors. I couldn't believe I had to order like 32 of these small ones. And, um, but then I recall I was like, yeah, there you go. There's like maybe 16 or something. Or, but I am doing two. I'm actually recapping the old one. So that's why. I just forgot that. Um, yeah, so I was thinking about starting with uh, all the resistors. Look at this. Just a lot of bags with resistors. And no, I, I think I will talk to the camera a bit. So, to do something that doesn't require brain power, I will start with the uh, decoupling caps, 100 nanoparts. Anyway, so what I'm looking for is pictures like this. It's uh, written like this. I've taken picture with the phone I'm filming with now. So just have to find a bag that says uh, SW1. And. Here we have E large, we have CAN, Northwest, Southwest 2, which is not the correct one, it's Southwest 1, Southwest 3, that's a bummer, must be here somewhere. Yeah, that's how it goes when you make a video. It's really funny because every time I make a video, something goes wrong. Yeah. <laughs> So it was already in bags, it wasn't a problem at all. First resistor soldered, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, at the same time I'm soldering the old board also. So just following along with uh, using the images as a reference. So this is Southwest 1, Southwest 1, finished with that one actually. So picked up all the components I need for the original, or the new replica board. Yeah, so we are in the Sony RX100 Mark II. So I think the audio is a bit better on this one. Anyway, I have finished this, except the capacitors. I have to do some more research because um, I need to figure out what this means. So you have orange, green, brown, gold. Uh, three, five, one. Not sure what it means. And then you have green, brown, black. So, yeah. I can also look at the schematic and see. Orange, green, brown, which is three, five, and then and multiplier of ten or zero. Three fifty, and then five one. So that's fifty one and three hundred fifty. So I used 330, I think, and then here I've used 47. I think that's okay. I found this online. I think we're good. Yeah. It's time to move on to the next image. So let's see. Here we go. And wow, that's a lot more. I remember these guys. It was a little bit special, but I figured it out, so... Yeah, this is easy. Just uh, decoupling caps and uh, three resistors, uh, some new electrolytics, and uh, this mod here. Yeah, 
glass rectifier and a 100 nanofarad, I think. Southwest 2, these are the components. And uh, yeah, let's find some many of these. I think these are, yeah, they are 10 microfarad, 25 volts. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was, uh, there's a mod here. Actually, I have to do this mod. It's underneath the board. There's a cut somewhere. We'll get to that. This is so far I've gotten. So, made a modification. Um, solder up some of these guys. But then I noticed something strange over here. Look, there's missing a hole. This looks like just a pad for the resistor there. It's not a showstopper for now, but wow. What happened there? So I'll take a picture and note it for myself. I'll figure out later why. Right, fixed it for now. So you can see. Yeah, this uh, capacitor wasn't such a good idea anyway, because we are missing a true hole plating. So if I attach to that pad, it's not going to the other side, but this VI is. So if you look at the other side, it's supposed to be a hole, but there's a hole there, so I can use that. And there we can see it. Not such a bad mod after all. Now we are at Southwest 3 and this is basically just ICs. So we're going to start with um, sockets. Soldering a few of these guys here. It's like watching paint dry, so I'm not going to bother you with that. Sockets. You were wondering why I'm called B Whack. <laughs> so, this bike is 12 years old. This has nothing to do with my video, just wanted to say. We're out in the snows, the tires from Sumi, Finland. Yeah, great stuff. So, we're getting along. We have all these chips in, and uh, it's painful because I have to clean them. So when I desolder them, I have to use solder, braid, and stuff like that. I have two run ICs which are broken on the pins. And no, you can't really... I don't think it's easy to repair these. Maybe it's possible. But I have some new ones, so that will be okay. Yeah, and we'll also do the same for the other board. Mm, I don't remember where this one is. I have to look. This is a gang resistor, or a resistor array. Alright. So got some round chips, 8264. I think they will work. 4164. So yeah, so I hope they will work. They are not the same, but should be compatible. It's a new day, it's Sunday. What went wrong with C14? So it's not in the KiCad design that's why it shows up like this because it came from sprint layout meaning I have never replaced the footprint uh, when I look at 250407 I can see that I have a C14 there <coughs> so let's see in the schematic maybe it's missing there so this is schematic for 250407 which I have based off and you can see C14 there 
right by the rams. So why don't I have it? I will check. Let's see. Oh yeah, it should have been around here. So basically I have forgotten to put it on. So why didn't it show up in the uh, DRC check rules? <clears throat> so DRC check rules, for you who haven't watched my video, uh, when you load the layout like this, you can do a DRC check and then run it and uh, everything should be okay. It's finished and everything was okay. So, but it's missing C14. So if you look at C14 here, <clears throat> you can see that C24 has a footprint. Look, if I click, I can actually select it. But if I try the same with C14, it's only drawings. So this is from Sprint Layout. So what I did with all the components here is that I removed the drawings and then replaced it with a part. But since it's not in the schematic, it will not uh, complain if it's not in the uh, layout also. Right, so we're just gonna check that I have the latest version. So it looks like, like I don't have any changes. Really great, so now I can go in and make those changes. Yeah, so it was over there. So let's insert that. We need the same components as the other 10 microfarads. So let's find that first. I'll just pick this one up, Control c put it up here, I'm also going to bring that um, 25 volt thing also, this, and then we're going to call it C14. Alright, let's bring it in a bit closer, connect it to 5 volt. And let's have some ground on it. There. And that's it. Of course, we need to up the version of the schematic. But. Now we're done with that, we're going to make a new netlist. And that's going to be used with PCB new. Yeah, let's go to PCB new. Alright, so now we're going to import it, click netlist here, and um, I don't want to delete any tracks or extra footprints, because I might have something here that disappear if it's not in the netlist. So let's just update it, and we should get, there you go, there you get the component. So let's put it here, so what I need to do, what I usually do, is I and disable tracks and then I turn off silk screen and yeah, that's it and then because then I can make a selection that doesn't delete anything else and then I put it back tracks and I think you get the hang of this <laughs> and then I put it in here so let's see if that works out. Let's run DRC again. Zero, zero. Both of these are empty. So that's great. Now it's, um, I've fixed the problem. Now I can close it and uh, I have to do the process all over again. <laughs> Plot the um, Gerbers. Gerber, Gerber check that all of this is correct plot and then I have to also make sure I plot it in Gerber catalog <laughs> then I have to use an excellent file I will put them in a single file so I don't get two that's it actually I should update the schematic revision also the layout revision like this before I do that. So I have to do it over again, but that's really quick. Just plot, gener generate, close, close, and we're done. So that's it. So now we'll update the GitHub with the latest uh, versions.
Yeah, since I broke two of these uh, RAM chips here, I have to desolder a couple from this board. It's a uh, 250 for 7 with uh, lots of missing chips on it. This side is so let's say dumb, I think. And here the can is done. I'm working on the power section. So funny, this one was exact copy of the original. So it was nice and uh, also paid attention to order film capacitors for this uh, common mode choke filter. And over here we have the input 5 volt, main 5 volt. Should be enough power dissipation for that one. Um, then we have to put the uh, capacitors here. I don't know where they went, but we will see. <coughs> so I'm using the old iPad again because uh, it has a nice stand. So. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy with this. I'm uh, getting along very well now. I haven't ordered this part yet. Uh, not sure what to do there. Any part that I'm missing now, which is really annoying to order for me anyway, I will just take from another board. So, so the funny thing though, those here, these are actually new. You can see they have gold plating. The original doesn't, but look, they are exactly the same as the original. It's a common mold choke. Uh, it just has some plastic housing, plastic housing on it, right here. The difference is that this one is open, so it doesn't have, it just doesn't have uh, the plastic covering, and it fit, fits perfectly down here. <laughs> it looks quite cool, also. I think. Right, so I'm sorting up the last components here. We have C90, which is uh, 470. It was actually a mistake in the schematic. This one was 1000 microfarad, but in the schematic, but that's a mistake because I had never seen that in any board. So, well, maybe. There are, but not in the two boards I have anyway. So, could have been recapped or something, but I changed my schematic to be 470. Yeah, so this 
part C90 is actually connected in series. It's kind of weird. Usually they connect uh, capacitors in parallel to the circuit you want to decouple. Yeah, but this one is a part of a charge pump circuit to double the voltage. So now that I'm close to the end, I'm just opening components that I have left. So that's twice I have components here that I don't know where it fits. So I looked for this one, it's 180. And that's, I um, don't know if you can see it, but it's uh, brown, gray, black, black. And I found it in the schematic, and that's R31. And if I look at the original board, it's not. It's 1K. And then if I look at SE25407 also, it's the same. It's a 1K there. So what? Where's the fault? Uh, so I look at. The schematic that I've been following for 250.407 and there's 180 right there. So there's a mistake in the schematic. So why do you need this component anyway? The 74.406 is actually a... Um, yeah, so it's an open collector. So you need a pull up there. Yep, soldering the dressing parts. See I'm missing this one. Which I have over here. Here. And the fuse, we'll have to find those. And the power connector, <laughs> so I have to desolder one of those. Then finally, this one. I think that's all. I think you got it all now. <laughs> so that's it. Connected everything, I think. And uh, here we have the old modulator. It's not a modulator, it's just the amplification of the video signal. It's the prototype I made some while ago. <laughs> I connected power and I haven't connected the Commodore chips or MOS chips because I don't want to introduce voltage before I've tested that everything's okay. I have a voltage meter here, we'll show you everything. But first, let's just check when I switch the power button. Uh, what's the current like? Oh, it turned off. No idea what happened. 23. I think that's something to do with this one. <laughs> the Arduino or something. But yeah, 23. So there's not much current going because they are missing half the chips anyway. So that's okay. So let's check voltages. It's gonna be hard with one hand, so let's put it on a stand. I think I have everything in shot now. So let's put it on ground. And here. Okay, my hands in, are in the way of the camera. So this is ground, pin 20, and then pin 40 of the VIC. The reason why, I, so, so you can see 4.94, so that's acceptable. And pin 20 and 13, so 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. That's VDD, which is supposed to be 12 volts. And we have 12 volts almost, so that's okay. So now I think everything's okay. I think I can just connect the Commodore ships and see if we can get it to work. Because now power is okay. Let's try and get a picture. And I think I will be using. <laughs> I'm really excited now. I'm a bit nervous also. Always when you have new stuff. Like, will it work? Will it not work? Well. What's the fun if it works again, <laughs> or at the first time? But yeah. So let's. I think we'll use uh, Jupiter Lander, like Commodore's favorite testing cartridge.